So I'm not one for making scripted videos, but this one requires a lot of technical analog video ideas that my brain can't conjure the words for on the fly. So if I sound a bit different in this video, that's the reason why. Also, that rhymed. So this is a Kramer VP720DS, which is a seamless switcher and a scaler. From what I understand from reading the manual, this rack mount unit was intended to switch between multiple analog video inputs ranging from VCRs to PCs and output said video to a single display. It can accept signals from pretty much anything that uses analog video, anything, you know, 15, 24, and 31 kilohertz and beyond. This makes it pretty handy for my 9821AS2, but this isn't the specific reason I bought it, so we'll get to that in a couple weeks. On the back it has a fused power input, just so it doesn't catch on fire when something inside goes horribly wrong. It also has an RS-232 port for controlling the unit and updating the firmware. Two composite inputs, two S-Video inputs, a component input, a VGA and DPI, or DVI inputs, along with the audio inputs and the VGA and audio outputs. When it powers on, it blinks some of its lights and then outputs a blue screen to the monitor. It does have a startup logo, but I disabled it in the options. Let's start up the computer in uh, 24 kilohertz mode and see what happens. By default, it looks a bit weird. It's stretched horizontally for some reason. The computer is outputting 640 by 400 at 56 hertz, and the Kramer is outputting the video at 640 by 480 at 60 hertz. The horizontal resolution is the same, so there shouldn't be any scaling horizontally. So if you open up the scalers menu and go into information, we can see that it d detects the input signal as 720 by 400. Uh, that's not right. Of course, I couldn't modify the resolution that it's inputting, this is where the RS-232 plug comes in handy. I ordered this null modem cable off of Amazon, and it got here in a package covered in Chinese text. Turns out the seller couldn't read it either, because what I got wasn't a null modem cable, it was a straight-through cable. So I had to modify it myself. Looks great, doesn't it? At least it worked, though. Using the firmware I downloaded from Kramer's site and my Pentium 4 machine, I updated the firmware, and now I'm able to set custom input parameters. In the menu here, it allows for three user input modes to be saved, which I did, but I still haven't been able to figure out how to recall them, so every time I start this thing up, I have to manually adjust it every time. I like to use Star Cruiser 2 to set this correctly since it has a lot of dithering. This means you can easily see where the scaler is scaling the image when the artifacting from the scaling goes away. We're at a 1 to 1 pixel ratio, which means it's a sharp image. It's looking pretty good right now, but here's the other problem. Well, kind of. The output from a PC98 is 56 Hz and the output of the scaler is 60 Hz. This means there will be some sort of quality downgrade re regarding a frame rate since the refresh rate is not the exact same. In the case of this Kramer though, it seems to have some sort of vertical sync so you won't see any torn frames as the computer draws to the scaler's frame buffer. So in order to keep everything in time with each other, the Kramer inserts duplicate frames every so often. It does this very efficiently though, since there is no input lag that I can perceive. Anyway, this means that that game's running at 56 frames per second, such as the Toho series, will exhibit some small stuttering, which I can capture with my slow-mo camera. Um, beware the flashing lights, oh. As you can see with the flashing light zone, you can see every individual frame that's being drawn to the screen. And you can also see that when you're moving your turtle riding character, every so often there's kind of a stutter, a similar frame being drawn in order to uh, space things out a little bit to let the uh, PC-98 catch up with the 60Hz video on the monitor. Luckily, most PC-98 games do not actually use the full refresh rate, though, since most games were designed to be run on older computers which don't have enough power to draw graphics at 56 frames per second. Of course, there is a way to fix this, but it's a give-and-take solution. The reason these monitors don't support the video output of the PC-98 natively is because the horizontal scanning rate required to draw 640x400 at 56Hz is 24kHz. This means that the beam has to go across the screen and back 24,000 times per second. The minimum horizontal frequency allowed on standard VGA monitors is 31 kilohertz or 31,000 times per second. In order to fake this 640 by 400 resolution at 56 hertz, you will need to increase the amount of time it takes to draw a full frame, but you cannot slow down the beam. 
In order to do this, we can just increase the amount of horizontal lines that are being drawn during V-Blank. Doing this won't slow down the horizontal scanning rate or speed up the pixel clock, but it takes longer to draw the full frame, thus reducing the frame rate. That's the give, but here's the take. Doing this further squishes the image vertically since more horizontal lines are being drawn. I'm sure you can stretch the image a bit with the monitor scaling options if this is a problem. Of course, with this setting I didn't do the math, so the refresh rate isn't exactly the same as the PC98's output, and I don't know what that is exactly. I just use the readout on my monitor's OSD to get it to 56kHz, so there will be a little bit of screen tearing. If you want to figure that out, go ahead, but it's a bit beyond my understanding or care at this point. It's, it's pretty much good enough. But of course, it's time for the disclaimer. I am not responsible for any damage done to anyone's monitor due to running it out of standard video modes, or even using this thing at all, really. Blame Kramer, not me. Do it at your own risk. Anyway, for most games, though, you would be fine running the scaler at 640x480 at 60Hz, since you won't see the stutter, as they won't be running at 56 frames per second anyway. So besides all that PC98 stuff, another thing the scaler can do is convert 15kHz video, like compositor's S video, to 31kHz video for a VGA monitor. This is my Super Nintendo through composite. I'm not really a big fan of how it does this. I'm thinking the scaler isn't doing much scaling and filtering when the video output is set to 640x480 since the resolution is the, is the same, but I'm not sure how the de-interlacing affects the video though. I just think that the tiny dot pitch of the newer VGA CRTs like this one right here doesn't really hide just how low quality the video image is through composite. It just makes things kind of blurry. Um, another thing it doesn't really do well is scrolling the screen vertically in older overhead adventure games like Terranigma or um, A Link to the Past. When it does this, it seems to drop every other frame. It's a little bit weird, but it doesn't seem to have any issues playing GameCube games, though. For this reason, I got curious and ordered me an S-Video cable for my Nintendo consoles. The video is a bit sharper and without the composite artifacting, but the scrolling issues didn't really go away on the Super Nintendo. It looked pretty nice on the GameCube, though. Here are a couple little video clips for comparing between composite and S-Video. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it in the video, but there's quite a bit more artifacting going on in the composite. It's pretty visible, especially uh, around those blocks on the outside of uh, Hyperzone there. So I guess the question is, is there a reason to own one of these things? Well, kinda sorta. For 15 kilohertz video, I would much rather just use my old TV since its low density shadow mask kind of obscures the blurriness in a way. It just feels more authentic. As for PC9821s, if you have an A8 or newer, it's more convenient to just use the 31kHz mode built into the computer, along with the Scan31 utility, and use an LCD for the few games that really do not like 31kHz. That way you don't have a big box floating around, along with your other big boxes that are floating around. However, if you have a PC9801, which does not support 31kHz video, then you might want one. <laughs> 